It's Friday, July 25th, and we have seen our new weather pattern come into full effect where we're going to start to see less and less severe storms out here in parts of the Midwest and Central Plains. But today we do have a severe risk with a focus on the Northeast. We actually do have a slight risk up here, which spans all the way from northern New Jersey all the way up into southern Massachusetts. Then an associated marginal risk, which spans all the way from Maryland all the way up into parts of of southeastern Maine. We also have two other marginal risks. One is going to be up here mostly in North Dakota and the Northern Plains. We have a small blotch down here in eastern Kansas. The main risk with these is going to be wind with the main risk of wind being out in the northeast where that is going to be a 15% chance of some severe gusts so possibly in excess of 65 miles an hour or that's just for the highest probability of seeing gusts in excess of 60 miles an hour would be this does have an associated five percent risk which spans that entire marginal risk area then our other marginal risk areas are also going to be covered in a five percent chance of some severe gusts now i do think these risk areas out here in the great plains do have a higher ceiling so i definitely wouldn't be surprised if they were possibly upgraded but mainly it's just a conditional threat for some 60 mile an hour gust and our hail threat is going to be pretty much totally confined to our Northern Plains risk area up there in North Dakota. I wouldn't be surprised to see possibly an introduction of a conditional hail risk out here in the Northeast. And this would be mostly for some hail around one inch in diameter. Then there are two very isolated tornado risks, very conditional. One is going to be out here in northeastern Kansas. And another one is going to be out here in northeastern North Dakota for some potentially weak spin up tornadoes and then our heat wave is going to persist with what looks like a bit of a break from the absolute hottest temperatures that we've been seeing recently which have been upwards of 105 and even close to 110 degrees in the feels like category it looks like it's going to be a lot of high 90s low 100s across the great plains mississippi river valley and back into the southeast where we haven't seen a lot of super hot temperatures but as we go further in today it looks like there is going to be a corridor unfortunately of some extremely hot temperatures in the dallas fort worth area where there could be some feels like temperatures of around 107 but mostly it looks like um, a lot of our area which has been receiving the absolute highest temperatures will get a bit of a break from those and then our flood risk there is going to be a slight risk of some excessive rainfall out in the central plains all the way up into the midwest with a bit of a more concerning corridor in northeastern kansas where there is a possibility of an isolated area or two of five to even up of to six inches of rain by in our slight risk there's that conditional threat for two to four inches of rain then in our other marginal risk one is going to be down here in the gulf coast one is going to span from the central plains all the way up to the northeast one is going to be out here in the northern plains and another one is going to be out here in northeastern california there is the potential risk for one to two inches of rainfall in those with some areas with possibly accumulating around three inches although that would be pretty isolated here is our simulated reflectivity from the northeast and these storms are going to be initiated around midday by some troughing a possibly a remnant mesoscale convective vortex and then a front pushing through the area and in the early stages they could bring that threat for possibly some hail and damaging winds but that main threat for damaging winds is going to evolve as we go into the early to mid afternoon as the storms start to turn into a more linear and clustered mode and this threat would actually be over by around nightfall as these storms push off into the Atlantic. Our second main risk area is going to be out here in the central plains mainly northeastern Kansas into parts of northwestern Missouri and it looks like one thing that could hinder our storms is going to be a lot of convection from the early morning hours but it looks like this area would have enough time to possibly recover and it looks like it's going to be actually a pretty similar story to what we saw up in the northeast where we have some frontal activity and a remnant mesoscale vortex pushing through the region and this could actually bring a tornado threat with some possibly discrete supercells along our boundary in front of our MCV that would be where that highest tornado threat would be but the main threat with this is going to be possibly some damaging gust in excess of 60 miles an hour and then these storms would also initiate in the early to mid afternoon and the main threat with these would push all the way into the nightfall hours. And then our last area to look at is going to be up here in the northern plains with possibly a cluster evolving. All of this risk up here is going to be pretty conditional. We're going to have some convergence along our upper plains convergence zone 
And of course, there's going to be help from some flow aloft where it looks like a cluster could possibly develop around the mid to late afternoon and push into mostly North Dakota, but possibly a sliver of northern South Dakota, where the main threat with this would be some hail in the earlier stages of these storms, and then mostly the threat of some damaging winds. I do think this would have a higher ceiling if it did evolve into a cluster like the HRRR is predicting, although that's very conditional, and I don't think that's super likely to happen, but it definitely could. I do think we could see some 70 mile an hour gusts up here at the most, but it's more likely to just be some isolated 60 mile an hour gusts. And then here are 500 millibar winds really seeing what's bringing some of our large scale forcing. We're going to see that we do have a bit of a high pressure system over parts of Colorado that could bring some organizational shear to our storms out here in the central plains, mainly northeastern Kansas, northwestern Missouri. And then that could possibly mean some more organized clusters out there. We have a large high pressure system, which has been bringing that large heat wave and is also helping to squeeze some of the flow up here. But the main areas of flow and short waves are going to be one up here in the northern plains with one ejecting around the mid to late afternoon hours when we're expecting to see some storm initiation. And then a pretty big dip in our jet stream with a lot of downslope flow in our northeastern risk area, which is also going to help to bring some organizational shear with those storms and also help to initiate them as well. And taking a look at our storm environments, this is weather sounding from the northeast, and the main takeaways are going to be a pretty unstable environment nearing 3,500 Cape, very moist environment, 73 dew point, and a 3 Cape at around 131. So very favorable for some severe weather today. I also don't think the tornado threat up here is going to be zero. Also, I do think it is going to be pretty close to zero, but if there was a tornado up here today, I definitely wouldn't be surprised. But again, main things, a stable environment, moist environment, some drier loft also, possibly bringing some severe gusts to the region, a downdraft cape of around 1,100. So the main threat with these would be some damaging gust around 60 miles an hour. Now here is a environmental sounding from our central plains risk area so that northeastern Kansas, northwestern Missouri risk area, and we're immediately going to see why a tornado threat could be realized out here. We have some curvature in our hodographs and our holistic and winch here is going to actually be fairly favorable for a couple of tornadoes. Then our organizational shear is going to be around 40 knots, so definitely some organized storms, and that's going to be coupled with some wind veering. Our lowest cloud level would be low enough to support a tornado threat potentially, and then again a very unstable at around a 3,700 cape in an extremely moist environment with a 77 dew point, then our three capes can be nearing 100 as well. Another reason why we could see a flood threat evolve out here in eastern Kansas is because our precipital water is expected to be extremely high at around 2.16 inches. That could also mean some stronger downdrafts and the possibility of some severe gusts over 60 miles an hour. So there definitely is a threat for possibly a couple of tornadoes out here in northeastern Kansas, northwestern Missouri, and there also is definitely a threat of large amounts of rainfall, severe gusts over 60 miles an hour. And I actually wouldn't rule out the threat of seeing some small hail, although our freezing level is going to be quite high, so that would hinder that quite a bit. Our last weather sounding is going to be from the Northern Plains risk area, and this is a classic Northern Plains high-based large hail, well, potentially large hail and damaging wind setup. We have a very moist environment for this region in particular at around a 67 to 70 dew point and then a extremely unstable environment at around 4100 cape we also have some dry air aloft a higher lowest cloud level which would mean those higher base storms then our freezing level isn't going to be super high we do have quite a bit of cape near our freezing level then our middle of elapsed rates are going to be 8.7 celsius decrease per kilometer now one thing hindering this would be the organizational shear it's only going to be around 24 knots, but because this is closer to an area of greater flow aloft, I wouldn't be surprised to see that be anywhere between 20 and 30 knots. But the main takeaways from this weather sounding is that it's mostly just going to be high based hail makers and wind makers up here in the northern plains.